strikes me is what's going on here is an attempt to place blame. Who was who sinned here? The man or his parents? The disciples of Jesus ask, who 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 sinned? This man or his parents? And Jesus refuses to take either side. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. They want to have the certainty of knowing whether he sinned or his parents sinned. And Jesus doesn't give them that satisfaction. They want to know because people don't like to have their categories upended. You know, you're the blind man. That's your place in my world. You're the sinner. You're the blind man. Or your parents are. But I need to know what category, what category you fit. Do you ever try to change your condition in someone else's world? They don't like it. <laughs> it rattles their mobile of the universe. No, it's not him. Uh, it's somebody that looks like him. We can't have him healed because he's a sinner or his parents were sinners. But in either case, he's blind. And if he stays that way, the world stays put. Not only do people not like you when you try to change your condition in their mobile, in their universe, this no longer blind man, they don't like the one who heals him. For the same reason, you're upsetting my mobile, Jesus. This is the way the world is. It's the way I figured it out. It's the way the church told me. It's the way my parents told me. It's the way that I can make sense when things that don't make sense happen. How to stop that mobile from shaking. Our Pharisee friends interview the blind man. They interrogate his parents. Are you sure he was really born blind? As if his parents wouldn't know. So they interrogate the blind man again. And they keep getting the same answer. That their world is about to change. And they don't know what to do with that. Because that's what Jesus was telling the disciples when he refused to put the man and his parents in either of the two categories offered. Is that there's a third category. Is that their world is about to change to change. <laughs> they won't hear of it. So in frustration, they just poke their fingers in their ears and they say, nah, 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 nah. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We had Moses. You, you healed on the Sabbath, so you're a sinner too. And all you sinners can just leave. They're thinking, uh, to their credit perhaps, that they are keeping God in the equation when in fact they're putting God out of the equation and putting this man or his parents, somebody's sin at the center to maintain the illusion of certainty and control. Someone wrote recently that we should stop blaming God at the front end of the world's struggles. Right? Obviously, it's an act of God. But instead of blaming God at the front end of the world's struggles, we should look for the grace that surfaces in the struggle. Maybe that's Something that we're starting to see here and there on the balconies of Italy and Spain and the streets of Mallorca. And I'm sure in our streets as well. Look for that grace all around you. Don't look for who to blame, the man born blind or his parents. 
Look for whom to bless. Amen.